right, and we are live with the 33rd episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose. Uh, this week, I am joined by Mesa, Nexus, and Atma. How are the three of you doing this fine, beautiful, very hot Monday evening? It is really hot. Wait, how, how warm is it near the two of you? I know... What What is it for us right now, Mesa? Is it like 80? I don't know, see. Oh, well, aren't you uh, lucky? <laughs> see, it's 89 degrees over here in Portland. Oh, shit. We're, I mean, we're pretty close to each other on the same coast, so it's about the same. What about you, Yama? What's, what's your temperature running like? It, it only got to like 85 today, so it was a cool day. for. The... <laughs> it it was like in mid-90s this weekend, so... I, I guess I... Uh, Someone can handle uh, more intensive heat the more uh, gamer chairs that they've accumulated, which is why I can't handle the heat for shit, because I have zero gaming chairs. <laughs> I don't know if the gaming chairs are a contributing factor in the heat deterrence or not. I'm going to go with no, but I'm not a scientist. I am not a scientist, but I, I, I know the science behind it. I'm no weatherologist, but... Mm-hmm. Isn't it called like meteorologist or some shit? No, dummy. It says meteor in it. That's for space shit, right? Yeah. We're talking no, no, about I, weather. I, I, it's obviously a weatherologist. No, I, 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 I am fairly confident in this that like if you're a weather person, you're called like a meteorologist, right? Then why would it be called weather? <laughs> it's not called a weatherologist. But, okay, you're fucking. <laughs> <with me. laughs> I will, wait a second. Isn't weather? Just walk into. <laughs> Oh shit, Blaine's here. Uh, that's why the camera's gonna mess up. Oh, see, oh, see. Meteorologist is I mean, totally wait, a real term. Well, yeah, Mesa, eat oh. shit. Uh, meteorologist, an expert in or student of meteorology, a weather forecaster. Yeah, it's whether or not a meteor is gonna hit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> Jesus. I fucking hate you. Oh, Blaine, you're here now also, correct? Yes, I am. It it is good to have you here. Um, shit, I only put up four squares. You you can be the secret off screen speaker. That, that that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. I'll um, allow it. I was making a delicious go. steak anyway, so. <laughs> uh, let me go and do the rigmarole then. Um, actually, how hot is it where you are, Blaine? What's the temperature like? Me, I'm pretty hot. Um, I don't know what the temperature is. Let's see. It says 76, but I think that's a lie, because it was humid as hell today. Did you consult your meteorologist, though? I have a meteorologist at the corner of my computer screen synced with the internet. Oh, shit. There you go. I I will fix your camera in a second, uh, Atma, as soon as I can. (laughs) Um, So just rig and roll at the top of the show. Game Session Podcast is filmed here live on either Sundays or Mondays. Typically seems to be leaning on Mondays nowadays at 5 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as full episodes and individual segments. Um, I want to give a shout out to my patrons, Ramen, Bo, Fourth Big Boss, and Sly. Thank you very much, everyone there. And with that, I think the first topic I want to get into, this might be a uh, Blaine-centric beginning. Blaine, how are you enjoying your brand new PC? You've you've assembled a new PC of some sorts. Would you like to describe it? I can neither confirm nor deny those allegations. Can you? Can you? <laughs> You're a um, PC nerd now. Well, no, because I didn't put it together. Also, I apologize to any listeners if you hear me eating something. I'm trying to mute the mic as much as I can. Do you, do you, it's do you just ASMR. What the specs are. Um. I know I have a 3060 Ti graphics card. I know I have really good. I have an eight core processor. I forget the name off the top of my head. Jose, you have a picture of it. You could just fucking send. You know you have- I technically, I think I do. Did you message that to me on Discord? I did. In fact, let me just look back at that so I can read it and then pretend. Everyone pretend I didn't just say that. You don't just know them all off the top of your head? Red knows my PC specs off the top Uh, of his head. Blaine has a Ryzen 7 3700X. Uh, Okay. Oh, so you mean uh, uh, one of these? I didn't see it. Oh, look at that. It's a computer part. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, I've I've, I've been procrastinating selling this for like like six months now. 
Oh shit! I remember that one. That's the that's the one that goes in the motherboard, and then you put the funky toothpaste on it. That's true. Is that also with the Jesus desk Christ. clamp? That if you put it down the wrong way, you can ruin a five hundred, six hundred dollar computer part. Yes. So that's why I, I paid Micro Center to do it. It's pretty stupid. It's so thing, I'd easy. Say. I did it. It's easy. Yeah, I also got I also got RAM that I needed to sell too. So mm. if anyone wants a CPU and RAM. Uh, so no, how does it feel actually, to? I actually might buy your RAM. <laughs> how does it feel to drop that much money on a PC, though, Blaine? I don't feel anything anymore. Do you feel? I mean, you got like a hundred forty-four hertz monitor, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm at locked at like I think 1080p, which is fine because I said I literally said to the guy, if I can just do 1080p, if I can do good frames and run pretty much, if I can just run anything out, like I don't need I, like. I, I don't want a giant top of the line best thing, which I guess I ended up getting anyway. But like, basically, but like I was like, I don't want to buy another computer for like ten years. And he was like, I mean, with this setup, probably you'll be fine. Yeah, basically. Yeah, especially if DLSS uh, starts to grow, like, like, like with DLSS, your computer can easily run like Death Stranding at like high to near max settings at 4K, like mm. no problem. So. Yeah, you're 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 sitting pretty. Yeah. And yet all I can do, all I've been playing for like the last two days is Total War Warhammer because I'm a crazy person who <laughs> didn't realize how hard I would fall into the game. How old is that? Twenty sixteen is that's the first one. That, that's not and that then old. second one's I think twenty seventeen. I think I don't know. See, when the, I I believe the first game I played after getting my build, which had a which has a thirty eighty in it, the first game I played for hours on end was literally Among Us. I'm like, yes, finally I can run this fucking basically flash game at fucking hundred forty four frames. I you couldn't see, possibly do that before. You can see it at such a high resolution that you can see the little blank spots where like the fill tool didn't actually fill the color on the design on the sprite. Are you using a? Uh, Fuck, I, I don't want to. It's a display. Am I, am I getting this right? It makes a display port cable, not HDMI. Yep. Mm -hmm. They have two display port HDMI. Are you using, uh, using a display HDMI. port cable? Oh, you want to use a display port. That way you can get the uh, higher than 60. I don't know what that is. I mean, and I mean, you can no, see I mean, all the CM Pachter Bacas. 1080p, 1080p um, 144 is possible on uh, HDMI. Oh shit! Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just when you start getting to um, like fourteen forty p and four k, that's when you start needing the uh, the the extra bandwidth that the display port will give. Though right now, technically HDMI two point one has the highest bandwidth. Huh? <laughs> I did sorry. not know that. Let's continue. <laughs> uh, so let's go over some recent releases. There hasn't really been too much. Lately, but I have Blaine, you've been playing the Switch version of Doki Doki. So without going into super spoilers or anything, uh, you want to give some thoughts? Sure. Or I actually, just, just real quick, who else here has played Doki Doki? Uh, I played it when it first came out on PC. Mm -hmm. Same for I me. I downloaded it. I never got around to playing it. Um, the VNs aren't really my thing. I played it with a friend for like an hour and then we never really went back to it. Okay. So Blaine, go ahead and introduce us to the world of Doki Doki. Well, I'll be real. I'm probably not going to do a whole, like, this is what it is. Cause if we ever do like a spoiler cast on it, I'll save that for that. But the long story short is I heard it was this subversive and meta dating sim game. And I don't feel like that's a spoiler at this point because fucking it's advertised as a horror game. Um, I played it. At first, I really, really loved it. I eventually beat it and realized that everything I thought was going to lead to more stuff doesn't actually lead to anything and wasn't actually subversive writing. So I kind of don't know how I feel about it at this point. Like, it does some cool things, but. I feel like I feel like leaning so hard into the meta narrative of like video game character video game characters doing atypical things of video game characters that's I guess that's the way I can skirt spoilers just doesn't really feel as strong to me as if you could have when you could have actually made this like the anti dating sim game which I thought it was going to be but then it never actually went to those places. Mhm. Mm 
How much was the uh, Switch version actually? Because I played it for the very beautiful price of zero point zero. Yeah, it was I believe it was fourteen ninety nine. At least that's what I paid for it. I did hear they put a bunch of new stuff in it. Though. There is, and that's part of why I'm like I'm going to play those side stories because if those are just regular dating sim things, I'm going to be like, yeah, wow, this really misses the point. What's up? <laughs> Without, because I told you this beforehand, like without spoilers, yeah. um, and I think you might agree with me. I, I don't want to say the entire thing, but there is a very specific thing that you can do in that game that plays off so much better if you're playing on PC. Yeah, this is no, how they yeah. handle it on console. They do their best to replicate that on console. I actually, I really could. I genuinely, um, I commend them for what they did with that because I believe it's also tie tied to some sort of I don't know if you can call it an ARG or not, but there's something going on with that that is definitely like a puzzle to solve. That I I'll be honest, I was gonna dig really deep into it and then I stopped caring and then I started playing other games. Yeah, there's some mm. there's some file yeah. exploration and some percent mm -hmm. app data percenting in there. Out out of curiosity, um, for anyone here that's played Undertale, how do they handle the? There, there's a part of the game where if you're playing on PC, you're repeated like as part of the story, you're kind of getting like repeatedly killed, and the game actually crashes, and you just have to keep booting it up. I think like ten times in a row mm -hmm. uh, before you can actually progress. How do they handle that on console? Does anyone know offhand? In Doki Doki or in Undertale? Undertale. Because I, I know, like, because I know, like, the platform holders, they just they will not allow you to like purposefully crash your game. I, also, is is that not a? Is that from like the the? I hate to call it this because I fucking think it's a stupid way to gamify this, but is that from like genocide runs or? Because I never played that. No, I, I believe it's all runs. Okay. Because I, I never did that, and um, I I definitely got it. Uh no, I I got it on console, but I didn't make it to that part of the game went in my playthrough. I kind of stopped. Call isn't the run internally called No Mercy Run, and Genocide Run was only something that was done by fans, or, or coined by fans? I've had so people, I believe it's, believe I've it's had people no correct Mercy me on it. Internally. No, I, that's what I thought, because I was like, that makes more sense as far as it's literally based on the mechanics of yeah. the game. But then I had someone tell me no, because No Mercy Run is a different thing, and I was just like, whatever, I'm tired of Undertale fans. N64 game, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I have it on my <laughs> shelf over. I have it on my shelf over there, but I've never played it. Oh, it's shit. It's, uh, dated but fun. Actually, I think I have the PS One version on my shelf. Oh shit! Yeah, All right, for let's these, like for those like 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 PC very focused uh, uh, indie games. I'm really waiting for the uh, the Sonic Dreams collection oh, <laughs> the, uh, console port. Yeah, that has that to get a console one, um, port. That one's going to be tricky, I think. Are they actually working on it? VR oh, absolutely. I, I, I don't know, and I refuse to know. Let's see. Let's go ahead and jump into the big news story of the week, I guess. Yeah, Super um, 30. Hell yeah, Nexus, you're on point. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's absolutely what I was referencing. It's exciting. Um, to finally bringing that franchise to the West, though. I'm very excited. It is by far the most exciting thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. Week. Can't think of any other news. None at all. Not actually. No, it was surprisingly a very uh, slow news week. Aside from yeah. this, um, we kind of. That's why I'm very glad I backlog things and not just wait. Uh, anyway, uh, Valve, the company most known for not making games and just kind of being a digital storefront, uh, has announced the Steam Deck, a handheld PC gaming system. Uh, while handheld PCs certainly aren't, I'm sorry. While handheld PCs certainly aren't a new concept, they have up to this point proven expensive with no widespread support. And see, instead, the Steam Deck is po. I can't fucking read this. This is on my second monitor. It's vertical. The text is too small. Let me increase this because I'm blind and I'm old as shit. I'm old. I'm eternally 19 though. So to completely disregard that last statement, I am not old as shit. Mace is an old man. I'm young as fuck. Um, yeah, I'm a zoomer. <laughs> <laughs> um, instead, the Steam Deck is posed to tackle the significantly weaker Nintendo Switch with its vast Steam library and more pow powerful hardware. Um, the Steam Deck comes in three storage options, with all of them wielding the same processing and graphical power. At $399, you have a 64GB e 
eMMC internal storage. Um, and they all come with carrying cases, or whatever. Uh, for five twenty nine, you can get the two hundred fifty six gigabyte NVMe SSD drive, and for six forty nine, you can get the five hundred and twelve version. It also has some like anti glare as glass and whatnot. Uh, Mesa, do you want to go over the tech stuff since you are hereby legally dubbed the tech wizard? Hmm. Uh, so, um, so we know um, they, they 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 released some information about the specs. Uh, on top of that is um, using um, AMD's newest architectures, the same ones that are in the Xbox series and the PlayStation 5. Um, um, based on what they've said it is, it looks to be like a little bit less than half of what the Xbox Series S is. Um, uh, it's also, um, let's see, what was it? I think it's, I think they said a, uh, eight hour battery life from web browsing. I think they said like two uh, to eight, depending on the game yeah. and like what, what you're trying to like output. Yeah. Oh, it's also worth noting. Uh, what's the resolution? It's a uh, 1280 by 800, I believe. It's yeah. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, 29, yeah. 2980 by 800. That's right. It's a little bit higher than 720p. Um, because you know, for a handheld thing, aiming for 720p is usually the best option for performance and everything. Um, uh, so the thing about this device, though, is that um, uh, a lot of people are saying Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch, uh, in comparison to it, but I don't really think that's really the market that it's really attacking. Um, it's more attacking the, 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 the small, but was slowly growing, um, like handheld PC space, things like the G the GPD win, um, or the Aya Neo, there's these handheld windows computers that had, um, off the shelf parts, um, and, you know, could play games pretty well, but, you know, cost like thousand, uh, $1,500 because, because they had, they had to buy these parts wholesale. Because Valve is so much a such a bigger um, uh, company with a lot more resources and a lot more contacts, they're able to go directly to AMD and say, "Hey, we want to start building this type of SoC," um, and that's what allows them to keep the the cost of the device so much lower than the competition in that regard. Nice. Um, I I I see people saying like, "Oh, look, the new Switch OLED is three hundred fifty." And you can get this for 400. I would not recommend that base 400 model to basically anybody because it's like it, it, it's EMM, mm -hmm. it's EMMC storage. Splash it's it's, 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 it's going to be slow as shit. Just pony up the extra 129 to at least get the 256 gigabyte because that's NVMe. That. It's going to be so much infinitely faster. Do not mm -hmm. settle for that base I mean, model. Yeah, like loading times off an SD card, like. They've gotten better over the years, but that's still not optimal. Optimal, not ideal. Not ideal. Absolutely not. Um, Did you try to reserve? Oh, or no, we should we should say this. So one thing that Valve has done that none of the other platform holders have done for their hardware is you were restricted to pre-order it based off, I believe, the seniority of your of your um, Steam accounts, mm -hmm. which is weird that's because I fucking awesome. <laughs> Because I, I tried to get mine that first day because my account I've had since, I believe, 2008. So it's, it's what, like 13 years old at this point. And I couldn't get in until, um, I, be I believe, yesterday at like 10 a.m. or something. But I was like 10 minutes late to doing it. And I still got it, like, no problem. It's only a $5 reservation. But it's like, fuck, if that, if that fights off scalpers, fuck yeah. It, it's it's so easy. Fuck over scalpers. Basically, yeah. Because didn't PlayStation, Wait. they tried to do that with their PlayStation Direct shit for PS5s, but it, the site just didn't work at all. Wait, um, someone in the chat saying that, are you saying that the, the, the they said that the, street, that the Steam Deck will have um, a free mini uh, M.2 slot? Because if that's so, then that changes like everything. <laughs> uh, you mean as Is far that... as like storage space? Yeah, in terms of storage space. Yeah, yeah, I believe it does have some kind of either either additional or replaceable or something. Cause, like, cause, cause, it was um. Okay, so the bottom one will have a free one as well on top of the uh, the SD slot. Yeah. Cause, like, if that's the case, then honestly, the schmoove is a uh, is a uh, get the get the base one and then uh, up and then upgrade it yourself. 
Right. And I know, did anyone, I know I had to leave for a second, but did we already cover, you can also wipe off Steam OS and just put Windows 10 on there if you want? We haven't yet. Yeah, okay. so that's like one of the cool, I, I don't believe you even have to wipe it, like you technically can, but you can you can use stuff like Game Pass, you can use the Origin Store, you can use like basically anything you want. Like, you know, the if one a game thing- does it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 if you finish your thought first. Oh, no, I'm basically good. You, you can go. Okay. Um, what I'm wondering is, I is this going to, because I remember like one of the, like with Steam Big Picture and stuff like that was you could only really use things with controller support or if you did activate them, like you would have to, like if you, you, would, you would control the menu with a controller, but like if you're using Steam Link, which God, I don't think I ever used that more than once, or like Big Picture mode on the PC, then you would go back to your mouse and keyboard. I'm wondering with this, is this going to just be like locked to anything that has controller support? Or are they actually going to put in some kind of situation where I like it's remapped or whatever? I believe there's going to be a couple workarounds. And because like I I was one of those people that tried desperately to like just get my Steam control and be like, this is actually a cool control. I'm going to fucking use it. Because what, if you go into a game, like I tried playing Fear 1 and 2, which don't have native controller support on PC. Uh, so you can get your Steam controller and like once you boot it up, uh, you can download profiles that other people have made that kind of like remap the buttons to your controller. You can customize everything to be as is. Uh, so I, I would imagine it would do that uh, natively yeah. for all the buttons, all the inputs, the mouse. I, track I will pad, say. Whatever. Oh, well, I will just, say just real that, quick. Just oh, sorry, real quick yeah, you, also, go on, you go. On. You can add Bluetooth controllers. So you, theoretically, you can you can Bluetooth hook up a, uh, a a traditional keyboard and mouse also. And that's why they sell you the the Game Gear Kickstand for five ninety nine. <laughs> no, um, I mean, I'll also never give up the fact the... that it looks like a Game Gear. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, it looks like a Game Gear. Also, yeah, the uh, there's the. Uh, there's a type C port on the top of it that can be used with any type C dock that you might have. Um, so like you don't for have stu- to get the specific for a stupid dock. person like me. What kind of things would you put in a type C dock? Like, you know, like USB or ports for right keyboard and mouse or HDMI or uh, Ethernet connection. Okay. Even, even if you have to use a converter, you can basically put anything in there and it should theoretically yep. just work. Mm-hmm. It just works. Um, uh, what I was going to say about what Jose was saying is I also, I don't know if that was exclusive to the steam controller. I know that they, I, maybe they later brought in mapping for other controllers, like as far as downloading, that, that's how I fucking played, uh, new Vegas with a dual shock was like, Oh, someone actually mapped it out, but I had to swap the triggers because it was all weird, mm-hmm. but no, I, um, you go on Jose. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I think the coolest thing about this is that, you know, whenever you buy a new piece of hardware, you're just like, OK, well, I have to go and buy some games for this, whatever exclusives, whatever. But I already have like such a gigantic freaking Steam library over 13 years. I'm just like, I can buy this and I'm just good to go. I have so much shit I can just play on it like right out of the box. No, absolutely. Um, Atma, do you have any general thoughts on the Steam Deck whatsoever? So, not really. Everything about this, like, I I am basic minimalist PC gamer. Um, my I, I had help building a PC several years ago and haven't updated it in a while. Um, and so I and I I went through the stage where I bought way too many Steam games and then swore I'd never buy anything from a Steam sale again, and now, like, (laughs) my Steam account just sort of sits there, and occasionally I play something um, from it. Um, So so this does nothing for you in terms of, like, if you had to choose between a Switch or this, or even just, like, as a complimentary, you're basically just like, eh, don't care. Yeah, like, it... it, I might get it in the future. I kind of want to see what it the reactions are when people have it in their hands first. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's not an essential thing for me. Like I, I, the switch covers everything I, I want right now out of handheld. Um, and like, it definitely looks like an interesting piece of technology and like, it would be really cool for like handheld PC market and customizable stuff and things like that. If it, if it takes off, but like, I can't get over the D-pad placement. Like it. it <laughs> oh yeah. It yeah. Looks well, let's like talk it's about hurt my hands. Like yeah. uh, not very friendly on the hands. It looks like. 
For people that haven't seen it, it's um, if you think of like a Nintendo Switch, like if you're playing it in handheld mode, there's the analog stick up top, there's a D pad below, D buttons, whatever. And then on the opposite side, the face buttons are up top and then analog down. This has both the analogs up top and then the buttons to the left and right, like respective. And it just looks awkward as shit and uncomfy. Although people are saying it's actually not that uncomfy, but I don't know. I'll wait till I get my fucking hands on it. It's my also wrists like t- are hurting just trying to move my thumbs mm-hmm. up to be in that position. It's it's mm-hmm. also supposed to be like two pounds, and like even with my switch, here I can grab mine. Yeah, switch like, is kind I, of I, pushing I, the I, limit. I don't have like weak baby hands or anything. Like I can lift whatever. I right? um, mm-hmm. but but just like after a while, after holding this in my hand, I'm just like wow, my hands are is probably a little bit just too much weight to be like super comfy. That, that's yeah. supposed to be twice the weight. I'm like, oh, this is gonna murder my wrists. Like, it seems to be in this weird nebulous thing of, like, people who don't want to spend the money on a gaming laptop, who want portability, but don't want to sacrifice, they maybe don't want to spend the money on a gaming laptop, but then they also don't want to spend the money on a Switch, they want to have more versatility, I guess, software-wise. Um... I know, and again, I don't want to talk out of pocket or anything because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a physically disabled person, but I know a lot of physically disabled people have both said good things and bad things about it. Like as far as if you, for certain people, for people who maybe wouldn't be able to deal with the heft and actually lift it, that's obviously a problem. But I know that there's also people who have said like, uh, again, um, I hope I'm not misquoting anybody but uh or misparaphrasing, but I know people who have said like, it's a, it would be a godsend for them because they either can't sit at a PC or like can't um like just can't have that kind of access so something that they could just have in their lap even if they're not actually traveling like i don't know i'm, I'm interested to see what it, those kind of applications are Th- those those gaps that it fills in that aren't filled in by other things already you know because mm-hmm. also I, I used to i'm sorry this is the last thought rem um like no i used to be on the whole thing where my gaming pc was my laptop and Nothing sucked more than like I have my fan and I have my laptop. I have to crane my wrist and then crane my other wrist on the mouse or back and forth. And it was just event. I flip one switch down, uh, the like a flap down because it's rubbing up against my wrist. That's a nightmare. So even if you need wanted to upgrade from that to just this little steam machine, that seems pretty cool. If you also still have this the storage space and everything else we talked about, uh, miss on go on. I'm sorry. All right. So I have two points. Right. Um. First thing. One's a rumor, one's a rumor point, and this and the first point is about fighting games. Rumor has it. Um, so one of the things that they pushed heavily in the uh, with the website at least is the idea of using this to play, you know, fighting games. Um okay. there's this current issue with with uh, in the fighting game uh community right now where uh there is this divide of what platform do we play on? PS PlayStation or PC? PlayStation has the convenience factor. Everyone has it. It's easy to bring, plug in, you set it up, you're done, right? PC mm-hmm. is a lot more hurdles. is a lot is a uh, is a lot more unstable. You know, you plug a stick in three times, and the game's gonna crash. However, PC uh, has the lowest input lag. Basically, with every version of all games, PC always has the lowest input lag and feels the best. Hmm. So. And I the, mean, you can personally attest uh, due to recent events that just switching, like switching between practicing a game on PC and then playing in a competition on a PS4 or a PS5 is uh, it's it's tricky sometimes. You, yeah, you notice it, you feel it. You I absolutely we, feel it. I I went on two in my recent tournament because uh, <laughs> because of that. Um, there 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 are some fights I should have won because of it. Um, but um so um so so the the steam os that's going to be on the steam deck is based on linux and uh steam has a wrapper called proton which allows you to play windows games on linux um i don't believe tests have the i don't believe i've seen tests saying how input lag is going to work on uh proton whether or not it's increased or not um, that's something I'm really curious to see. Um, and also it's obviously it's stability. How well is it going to handle, you know, 50 different controllers being plugged in and plugged out over yeah. the course of like five hours? Oh, well, well one thing that one might thing. be, 
one thing that might be worth bringing up, I bl- I forget the list of games. Um, I know like Siege was one of them, but so- something to do with Proton or an Apex. I'm sorry, uh, something to do with Siege and Apex. I know those those are two of the ones that are mentioned, mm-hmm. where you can't play them on the uh, on the Steam Deck because Steam OS using Proton has some kind of like conflicting issues with anti cheat measures. So mm-hmm. uh, you're probably gonna be out of luck on those as well as a couple of others. Mm-hmm. Um. We also forgot this. They're going to have a dock for it, which is separate. So if you yeah. want to use it like a straight up switch, but yeah. I already have a very good PC, so that's kind of null and void for me. The dock personally. would definitely be for something like a fighting game event or, or something along that vein, or for yeah, someone who maybe doesn't have a big beefy PC and wants to be able to use something. That's what I was about to ask. So, my son, so for sure, a low use case item. No, yeah. yeah. Which then also that makes sense why you would sell that separately. That's not like a grift at that point. That is yeah. no, this is only something that a few people are going to want. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, mm-hmm. Mason. So basically, if we put together the ideas of it has the ports for thing, it has the Bluetooth capability as far as controllers. It has the ports for everything, what have you. You could basically just bring one of these to a tournament or a few of them to a tournament and be like, okay, boom, boom, boom. We got like three TVs. Mm-hmm. We got controllers. We got everything. We're yeah. set. Because like, because like, the hope right now for a lot of tos is that um, with tournament organizers, is that hey, um, can we transition completely to PC because it feels so much better? Mm-hmm. Um, like, and this way you don't have to bring a PS4. It's yeah. as much as we talk about the heft of it. Uh, uh, right now, uh, with Guilty Gear, uh, the newest game that came out, Guilty Gear Strive. Um, um, uh, the input lag between PC um, on PC, it's under a frame and on PS five, it's almost six. Like yeah, it's a it's humongous a gap difference. And the that, developers um, of the games of uh, developers of guilty of strive have stated that's something that they want to work on, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I mean, that's just words. Wasn't I mean, that also something between PS four to PS five? Like there was some kind of issue there. Uh, PS four is like a little bit over four. And then playing a PS4 version on PS5 is in between. Uh, but PS4 playing the PS5. PS5 oh, so yeah. this isn't yeah. like you're playing the PS4 yeah. and the PS5 and it's fucked up. This is actually the PS. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's like nearly a hundred milliseconds of input lag. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. That's not good. So, so Mesa, you were probably starting off in the same boat as me, where I was just like. This looks dumb. I don't need it. I'm sure some people will like it, but I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. And then literally like an hour later, I was like, fuck, I'm going to fucking buy this R. I I mean, I don't want to buy it, but I'll come over and play it. I'm going to be real, Jose. I'm going to I'm gonna have to stop you right there and put you on blast. Because Mr. Mr. Fucking, oh yeah, I didn't, I thought it was dumb for an hour. Motherfucker like was messaging me, I think within like 10 minutes being like, man, I think I need this. Okay, maybe not literally 10 minutes, but it was quicker than an hour. I, it was quicker I, um, than an hour. I suffer from severe retail therapy. And when I, once I know I'm like interested in something, like I, I even turn to my girlfriend does. I'm just like, hey, so they announced this cool thing today. I'm not going to buy it. She dead ass looked at me just like, you already fucking know you're going to buy it. You just fucking get it, do. dude. You should get into buying Transformers every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or unlock PayPal's pay, pay in four. That will let you spend a lot of money very quickly. If I was if I was alone, uh, I might I might be like eh, maybe, but because I know you're gonna get it, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to try it out. That's true. I'll I'll, I'll let you try it out. Um, shit. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one Not last thing. Me, but I'm definitely interested in at least seeing what it can do. Can yeah, one last pretty... thing. Oh, go tiny, 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 tiny thing. Um. This is around this this device's performance is around where um people kind of figured uh the whatever the next switch is gonna be. <laughs> so I really I can't <laughs> wait to see what happens with that and I can't wait to see uh um how that evolves. Nice. Can, can, pour, one, can we... pour one out for the pour one out for the Nintendo fans that you know the Switch Pro. convinced themselves that something was real when there was no evidence and then got their uh, hopes. I mean, I mean, there there is evidence. There was there, there was there was there, evidence there, for certain things, not a there, Switch Pro. <laughs> there is evidence that something exists. Like we know certain things. Like we know what the SOC is and all that from Nvidia. However, like it, it's not it's not it's not this year. <laughs> it's not can this we, year. Can we at least come to this year? Kojima's working on the Switch Pro confirmed. 
Jesus Christ. Silent Hills will be an exclusive to the Switch Pro in 2025. Here we go. Can we come to the consensus that uh, we that we should always refer to this as the Gabe Station Portable? No. The Gabe Boy? I like Gabe Boy. The Gabe, Gabe Boy? Boy? Yeah, Gabe, Gabe Boy, really Gabe good, Boy has enough of a stop that like, it or rolls Gabe off Gear. the tongue better. The Gabe, Gabe Gear? Gabe, Gabe, Gabe Gear! Gabe Gear. <laughs> Gabe yes! Gear. Yes! Jason, I love you! <laughs> oh, the Gabe Gear. Gabe Boy is really yeah. Gabe Boy and Gabe so, Gear, those are the two. I see Gabe Boy is something that you would like go to Disneyland like on a on a shirt, just Gabe Boy. And, and try no, to no, see no, if you no. can freak out old people. No no no. What you wear to what you wear to Disneyland is you wear the I was kicked out of such and such for homosexual fast dancing. That's what you wear to Disney. <laughs> see, I can I can do something with the Vita and Lyra like the PSP. I just need a second. Uh, wait, so am I the only one that reserved one? Probably. Fuck. Now, <laughs> now I feel dumb. <laughs> Don't feel dumb. Gorgeous, hey, uh, Station. You'll get to make a video on it. It'd be great. Fuck that. Talk Steam Deck means life. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I look five three. <laughs> I, I still have I still haven't I still haven't played freaking uh Half Life Alex. Like I, I I don't I still don't really have the space for it unless I like set up over here. Do, but... you, do you have the Steam VR thing? No. I do. Can you wait, any... do you not can you play it without VR? No. No. It's so why are you complaining made... about not playing it? Because I want to play you... it. But you, you have to buy like a two thousand dollar piece of machine or whatever the fuck. It's not, you know, it's not this, this, this was like two hundred. This was like two hundred. Oh no, it was actually like five hundred. Uh, but I bought it with um, with 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 money that that I, I got. As one as one usually buys things with. I haven't with used funny it money because it doesn't fit my head very well. As 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 opposed to fun bucks. Oh boy! With a cool ending that I haven't seen many people spoil and talk about. Yeah, I still don't know what it is. Thankfully. Oh yeah, you you're right. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, I, like that game came out a while ago, and that yeah. ending is like some fucking huge crazy shit. And I Wait. haven't seen people spoil it and talk. Wait, about are we it. talking you're Half Life right. still? We're talking yeah, Half Life. Okay. Yeah. I I yeah. know vaguely what happens at the end. Yeah, I never right. would have expected yep. the fucking Valve and Half Life fandoms of all people to. Well, actually, no, I take that back. I wouldn't expect the modern Valve fandom to actually give a shit about spoilers. I would absolutely expect people who still consistently gave a shit about Half Life after like 30 years or whatever to not mm -hmm. spoil it. Yeah. At that they, point, you've they... basically just been in a, a hermit in a cave for fucking yeah. 10 years. <laughs> basically. I think you'd be surprised about the amount of people that. Uh, I don't know, like, like give a shit about Half Life. Like, I was literally just playing it like right before the show. I'm just like, oh, what can I play for just like five minutes and quick save and then dip out mm -hmm. as soon as we have to start? I just mean they're not talking about it as much. Oh, yeah. not much to talk about anymore. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like what the last episode two came out 2007 because that was the Jesus orange Christ. box. It took them Ooh, like that was the orange box. Yeah, I bought the. Yeah, I have a so physical loud. orange box on my shelf over there. Take them 13 years. <laughs> Remember physical PC games? Oh god. That that was that was the first game that like really um required you to make a Steam account. Like people were like super pissy about it back then. <laughs> Which you know <laughs> what? It, 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 it was like a new thing at the time, so I mean I can't I guess I can't blame people. I remember buying Counter-Strike Anthology because I was like, I've watched all these animations on Newgrounds and YouTube and I want to play Counter-Strike. And then I bought Counter-Strike Anthology at GameStop and I tried to install it. I go, what the fuck is Valve? I mean, what? sorry, what the fuck is Steam? And I just never fucking installed it properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steam had a, had a while to grow up before it became a, what people like actively recognize. Like, oh yeah, Steam's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then it became a force for evil like 10 years into its inception. <laughs> like most sort years. of. It's a good it's a good storefront, but fucking god, monopolies are bad. I think they've gotten a little bit too libertarian in in terms of like what they allow on their cuz yeah. it's just flooded with <laughs> shit. You get stuff like hatred. Uh, well, and inconsistently they, they, libertarian. Beautiful. I they'll, like it. They'll, it's great. I mean, I got I think you you would know my good faith opinion on on like all these like weird sex games and hentai shit that that's on steam or whatever 
but yeah, they'll allow the, it like they'll allow that stuff on there as long as the developers like take out like those files but the, the developers can just like have those files separately not available anymore. to download literally like, not on anymore the page, oh did they like, change oh yeah hey yep. you download this zip file for all the pornography not even they're just they're just pornography in the previews for these games now yeah it doesn't even matter crazy. anymore yes yeah, there, there used steam, to be a line and then they forgot about it steam's filter oh is just God. like almost non-existent at this point and then um because because oh, what, what even when an indie game wanted to get on steam they had like the whole green the green light thing where people had to like vote to see like what would mm-hmm. even be allowed and now it's just and then that got fucking abused because i remember like i don't know i know a yeah. lot of people out there don't like jim sterling uh but i think that they were doing a fucking service of like look at all these games that are literally just i bought a unity asset pack and didn't do anything like i don't mean like oh i w- was lazy i mean literally the thing you're not supposed to sell legally i'm just selling as if it's my own game yeah, yeah. of all the things i'm not i'm not the biggest fan of jim sterling but like that stuff was they did a fantastic job like talking Absolutely. about that who wants to talk dead space Let's dead talk space? Dead Space. I, I, I like love it. Dead Space. Oh, we're talking Dead Space? I love Dead Space. I, I enjoy me many a Dead Space, and by many a Dead Space, I mean those first two games, that rail shooter, <laughs> uh, parts of those movies. Isn't there a game of the week? Yeah, that's, that's the rail yeah. shooter. Oh, and there's yeah, the arcade game dope. that's a prequel to two and a sequel to one or whatever. Something like that. Ignition? Extraction? No, Extraction's the DLC. I'm the only one here who I, I actually likes the third one, aren't I? You know, Corey is going through them on his um on his Twitch channel. I believe we're going to be co-oping three, and I, I I played through it not too long ago. I think like a year, year and a half. I three is like very antithetical to the gameplay loop of one and two, where you're constantly having to like improvise. With whatever materials you have offhand, you ha- you're kind of forced to use different weapons that all act differently from one another. And three is just like you can build a grenade launcher, and all the universal and, and all the ammo is universal, so you can just fucking use a grenade launcher the entire time. If because you want. then we can make microtransactions, so you can buy ammo and buy things to upgrade your guns. Yeah, I don't know if you can buy ammo, but I know you can buy things to upgrade your guns, and that's the entire game's basically built around mm-hmm. as far as the gameplay loop. Like when I say I like Dead Space Three, I will say the game is bad. The game has problems. The game is one of the worst examples of uh, publisher meddling in a game I've ever seen. Um, what su- what kills me is that there is I'm a anybody who knows me knows I love like winter horror, snow horror, and I also just really like space horror. But like combining the two was just like the best thing ever. The problem is that like there is a really good game, a really decent good like overlooked game fighting to be seen inside that really mediocre piece of trash i i think for me it's that like as an isolate as an isolated game it's totally fine it's serviceable there's nothing yeah. like fundamentally wrong with it it's capital it's f just, fine it's it's just i really fucking love those first two games too especially like you you can say like oh, yeah. the alien to aliens comparison is totally there where one's maybe a little bit clunkier it's more on the horror and then two is like more action but just as tense it's um yeah. Two is just such a fucking perfect game, like front yeah. to back. I can't so find two, a single issue. Generations RE4. Oh, two yeah. made Isaac an actual character. And a great character at that. Every gen has an RE4. Basically. But, let's go into this. Uh, wait, what was the what was the last generation's RE4 then? Evil Within 2? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Evil Within 2 is yeah. fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty it's good. Like, it's like one of those that's like you just play it. It's oh, this is just this is just good. Yeah, it's different. It's way different, but it's also good. <laughs> um, um, but wait, oh, we didn't even story. talk about the actual yeah. news story. Yeah, no, we yeah, didn't. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, news. I successfully turned this into a Dead Space fan cast. <laughs> about right I, I, I think when we get the right cast members together, it's just a beautiful. And I, I say this with the best intentions, like the best beautiful mess possible, and I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's get to the new story. Um, while fans were busy rejoicing upon the, in- yeah. like he didn't let me talk about Super Robot Wars that much. Oh God! <laughs> wow, um, was it? 
Anyway, uh, while fans are busy rejoicing upon the announcement of a spiritual successor to the Dead Space series in the Callisto Protocol, which is helmed by the franchise co-creator and Sledgehammer Games founder Glenn Schofield, um, EA Motive, the team behind 2020 Star Wars Squadrons, has been quietly toiling away on a full-fledged remake of the original title in the same vein of Capcom's reimaginings of, of the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes. Uh, the game is... The game is targeting to use the first Dead Space as a strong foundation with a more modern approach to gameplay mechanics, feel, and visuals. Um, so yeah, they're looking to remake Dead Space Uno. And this is confirmed. The last I heard, this yes. was all rumor. It was substantiated. Okay. Uh, so, does anyone care if I fucking say say first on this? Yeah, go for it. I, I don't have it. much to say about Pop Space, off. So. I feel Atma, like Atma, as we all know, is the her. horror expert of the group. Well, I actually um, care about Dead Space. Yeah, oh, shit. Well, oh, so shit. do okay. I. <laughs> okay, that, we'll, we'll give you time to shine, Atma, but go ahead. Please. I mean, okay. Um, here's Originally, when I heard this, I was like, I don't want a Dead Space remake. I Kind of the same feeling I have of like Silent Hill. Just let it die. Just let it be done. I, I'm tired. But I will say... I'm more open to this now that it is officially confirmed because of one thing. A lot of people forget that Dead Space, like, Dead Space 1 is a fine game, but it also is not the best horror game ever made. It's kind of just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare with a lot of good environmental stuff, like a lot of good environmental building, but after a while you can kind of just see every scare come because it's, oh, there's a not dead body on the ground that's clearly going to jump at me. Or, oh, here's, like, uh, a a music stinger plays, and now the same thing that happened the last five times is going to happen. But, and the gameplay, like I said, like, I've always preferred the refined gameplay in 2, even if some people want to be like, well, no, it got away from its roots, and I'm like, eh, it plays better, in my opinion. It play and, and the fact that they focused on the horror being the story more so than, like, the actions going on, at least to me, feels better. So if they if this is their chance to go back to Dead Space One and like like you know if they're saying especially when they say in the same vein as how like the remake of Resident Evil Two, I'm interested to see what they can do with that. If they can maybe bring more of the psychological horror to that first installment more so than was there to begin with, and also give us some really refined modernized gameplay. I th- I think the things I'm looking forward to are kind of like echo what, what you're going off of, Blaine. I want it to basically just play like Dead Space 2, just have that refined gameplay. Yeah. Um, That game, even on PC nowadays, really isn't a looker. Definitely needs those uh, visual upgrades, new lighting systems that maybe you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with just like a straight up remaster. Um, What else could they... Um, and Dead Space 2 somewhat has this issue, but Dead Space 1 is very monotone in its environments. So adding even like some new colors, adding some new areas or like remixing the environments, I think could really go a long way to kind of break up some of the monotony that the first one in particular suffers from. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I fucking love Dead Space and I'd be all aboard for it. Uh, Atma, so... Typically, you're not a horror person, but you do like Dead Space. What's yeah, your take so, on this? So, like, Dead Space hits at the exact sort of, like, horror stuff that I do enjoy. Like, uh, Event Horizon was a movie that scared the shit out of me as a kid. And oh, yeah. it ha- has, like, lived in my brain rent-free for, like, two decades at least. Um, so I love that sort of like space stuff, alien, and the, anything horror and space related is good for me. And so I really love Dead Space and Dead Space Two. And for all reasons everyone has ever said, Dead Space Three was a you know shit for me. Um, and I am really conflicted about this because, like, I see all the points for a refresher of Dead Space and, like, updating the gameplay and making it more interesting psychological horror and doing, like... Like, bringing out the Dead Space that everyone sort of nostalgia remembers before they replay it again. Um, But at the same time, like, I want a new Dead Space. I don't want to visit the... the, Oh, God, I'm blanking on the name. Ishimura. 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 
uh, I don't like. We don't need to revisit that again. I, and I think that's just a little bit of reboot and remake fatigue. Um, and like I've just been thinking about how like everyone got super psyched for Metroid Dread because it's a mm-hmm. new entry in Metroid that for, that for like a series that hasn't been touched in, in a in a decade or more. Like it's an actual new entry, not Metroid Samus Returns. No, not plus you some. know. Dread itself has been a game that's been in and out of development since shit like the DS era. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say like 2008 or 2007, yeah. right? Metro Dread, right. they first talked about it as a DS game, so I mean, that's a long time ago. It was 2006, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I, I think it's also worth noting, and Kenny is pointing it out in chats. Uh, when we think like the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake, those were PS1 games, those were like mm-hmm. that, those were three generations apart. Yeah, the PS1 that's, games that's in particular question. are are tough to uh go back to nowadays. Yeah, like like Dead Space was PS3. Like we don't I next they're going to reboot Uncharted or something and and make Uncharted again. Like I don't need or, Uncharted again. They're already like, remaking Uncharted. Last of Us. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, that too. You know, like why? Uh, anyway. But like, like, yeah, for what for, it's Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say for what it's worth like uh, maybe some grievances about like just how well it holds up uh, fidelity wise um, and just like comparison to how it feels compared to it too. like Dead Space 1 still totally functional. You can play it on Xbox. It's backwards compatible. It's available on Steam. Uh, yeah, you can, you can totally play it like no issue. It's readily available. I just had the best I the best worst idea that's either going to come to fruition or it's not. And then everyone in this call is going to be mad at me that it did. Well, Jose and Atma will be mad at me that it didn't come to fruition. What if it is a reboot, remake, whatever of the first one in like theming, like you find this thing, don't know what it is, learn what it is and blah, blah, blah. But then like at the very end of the game, they reveal that it's actually a hard sequel to Dead Space 3 Extraction. It's a C-boot? Like a yeah, like a like a not your different character, or different situation, but like you know, like what if we find spoilers for anybody who hasn't played Dead Space Three? Humanity's done for. Um, <laughs> like what if we find out humanity did somehow survive either on another planet, other planets, colonized systems, or something, whatever. And like, what if the end of the game is literally like like the character you're playing as finding an audio log, and we just hear Isaac's voice start playing, and then it like shuts off. Would that be more something you think you would want, Atma? Like, not so much an actual hard reset as far as, like, a gameplay reboot and a story reboot narratively, but it still is a sequel in the universe. Yeah, that something like that would work really well for me. I don't know if they'll do it. And probably They're not going to do it because it is terrible. <laughs> oh, I'm, listen, I've, I've manifested things into reality before. Jose can tell you. I fucking made all that Alan Wake DLC control shit happen. I guessed almost every <laughs> single element before it came out, and I was losing my mind. I, I think what would be perfect for me is that... So so three... I won't go into, like, super spoilers. The fucking moon is a giant necromorph. Like, three went to some really dumb, over-the-top places. Where it's kind of, like, impossible to top that. The best thing yeah, you could do is that... And, and horror movies do this a lot. Once you raise the stakes so fucking stupidly high, the only rational thing you can do is to ground it right the fuck back down and do not have anything to do with that main cast again. Just start off as someone new in an isolated incident that has no stakes in um in, in the grand scheme of things. Like make 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 it like more of a character piece, more of like a yeah. isolated narrative i think that's the best thing they could do if they want to like continue the franchise uh forward aside from like remakes reboots whatever yeah yeah i mean if you were to go the route of like um i mean not exactly like a like an re2 remake because obviously the game is still you know fully playable and it wouldn't be too dramatically different as a remake but if you were to mm-hmm. add like you know, it's some new stuff. Oh, there's some new rooms. We changed up the way that that things work. Maybe the, even the story is a little bit different, or something like that. Mm. Uh, with the I gave Isaac with a kiss the button. Benefit of hindsight uh, for <laughs> for you know two and three. Shit, maybe he talks more in in this remake or whatever, right? Or talks even talks at all. Oh yeah, isn't he completely silent? In a he doesn't have a voice actor in the first one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. you're right. He I has think, grunts. That's about it. Yeah. Tells you how little I know about Dead Space. I only I'm only <laughs> really familiar with two. 
Um, I don't know. You could do maybe an interesting remake with the benefit of hindsight from you know the other two games. But again, uh, to, to play off what Atma was saying, I really just don't see it as something that's necessary. If you did maybe a remaster yeah. in the same vein as like you know the recent near one, where you're just kind of upscaling the game, making it look prettier, maybe you tune tune the gameplay a little bit and mm-hmm. put it on out on modern consoles. Sure, that's that'd be cool. But I I just don't really see the need for it. Really. Actually, you know what? Remake, yeah. Now, now I yeah. think about it, the the thing that would that would excite me the most of a remake versus a remaster is that they can from the ground up do a completely new lighting because you know, like three hundred and sixty lighting, it is what it is. You can remaster, uh, but it, it, there's yeah, only so right much here. you can do with it. If you do like ground up on new hardware, it can look really fucking good. Well thought out aesthetics and theming can re- as good as the one like as I feel like that's one of the few things that actually didn't age poorly in Dead Space One was like just the overall atmosphere, the visual theming, and even the lighting. While it's I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm sure I'm looking at this with nostalgic goggles, but like I remember the lighting still being pretty damn good for its time. But now we're not in that time, so yada yada. Like I don't know, like yeah, something like that would def- a remaster would definitely be a good thing. I also just don't expect EA to ever do that because I like the moment I saw them put it on EA Play as is, I was like, I, they're never doing a remaster. They don't need to. They don't want to spend the money. I think my other but... thing for me that like bothers me about this is that like the Resident Evil franchise is also getting new entries beside the remaster. You know, exactly. Like, yeah, they're they're getting seven. They're getting eight. While RE2 remake and RE3 me- remake are coming out, and this is just like the re- we, we, where's Dead Space Four to yeah. as like a companion piece or something. It almost yeah. feels again. This is probably just me being cynical because f- I fucking hate EA, but it feels almost like they're just like shit. We got this fucking property and we need money. Let's fuck it. Let's make a remake that worked for Capcom. Like I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't want to be cynical about this because I feel like there are a lot of ways this could go well. I just don't trust EA or wh- and whoever they put in charge of it. Uh, whoever they decide to colonize. God, they really are just like a colonizer of a fucking company. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was going to say, no, that's like hyperbolic. That's maybe I shouldn't say that. Like no, but that is literally what they do. They grab them, they make them do what they want. And if they don't, they kill them. I, I will say the, the the positive momentum within EA, um, it chiefly comes from them acquiring uh, Respawn, them having good games, having creative leeway. Yeah. And I believe the uh, the founder, it's was it Frank Zappella and Vince something? Like, like they were they're the guys that did Call of Duty 4. They were Infinity Ward. They went over to EA. They founded Respawn. Mm. Uh, one of yeah. them got promoted to like a very high up position within EA. So I would say like, hey, that's a force for good. Like, He's oh, pushing yeah. for more creative this. control. You reminded uh, me. Yeah, so so and EA's like definitely moving towards more of a better light, but you know, there's only so much with EA's entire yeah. structure still kind of being kind of shitty. But overall, maybe pushing more for the positive than it has been for many, many years. Maybe I all sure remake. the next Madden game is really good. Um, I forgot that they still make Madden games. Fuck yeah. me. I was trying to figure out what EA has done that isn't like Madden and FIFA recently, and I guess mm, forgot it, about it, Mass Effect. Star Wars, Mass Effect, Titanfall, uh, Apex. Are pretty good. I'm gonna start playing. Oh yeah, they're Apex, Apex aren't they? Yeah. yeah, Timefall. What's Timefall? Oh, Titanfall. It, Fuck. It, Sorry. It's, it's like some kind of Apex Legends spinoff where you like control a robot or something. I don't know. That was a good game. Seems, seems kind of derivative. Bad. No, I wasn't. I thought he was, and I just completely misheard him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Timefall? Are we talking about Hideo Kojima again? Oh, God. Oh, shit. Question before we move on. So I, I know I did like the horror analogy before, where when a series doesn't know what to do, it kind of resets. What would be the Dead Space equivalent of Jason X, where they go to space and they do a lot of stupid shit? What would be the stupider version of Dead Space 3? They did it. It's called Dead Space 3. <laughs> Sorry, like, I don't mean to be like, I, I, no, no, like, I know what you're trying to say, and I still stand by what I said about that game being capital F fine, but that is literally a game that goes from, la- from, from planet to space for five seconds back to planet. <laughs> like, I can't think of a better analogy as far as what is, like, the, the that version of that than that. Um, which, 
I'm going to use this as an excuse to talk about Dead Space 3. What drives me crazy is that, like, when you play Dead Space 3, especially if you play it on co-op, when you get to Tal Volantis, it feels like a different game. It feels like the game they were trying to make before EA w- was like, no, 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 change it to this. Because, mm-hmm. like, like, people will be like, oh, co-op was a ruin that game. And I'm like, no, no, no. I mean, I think it was forced on them at some point in development, but... Now, I would not even, I would say not only did they take that in stride, I feel like if you don't play that game in co-op, you actually miss out because there's these story missions that are really fun that the players experience different circumstances. If you play as Carver, there's literally a level that basically doesn't happen if you play as Isaac. Like, Mm -hmm. you don't really see anything, you're just kind of walking through rooms while you're, my friend was like freaking out over my headset, like, wow, like, "Ah!" I'm like, what are you, what is wrong with you? He goes, where are you? I can't say, and then we get to the end, and then Carver, and then Isaac turns to Carver and says, so, are you ready? He goes, what? He goes, you've been standing in this elevator, like, talking to yourself, are you okay? And that's the end of the mission, and you get out of the elevator. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's actually really good shit. That stuff's really cool. fucking cool. It, it's really weird, though. If you play it single player, like every time you have to interact with a thing to progress, there's always a fucking second thing yeah. right next. So you're like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be playing this co-op. It, it's like they Resident Evil 5 did, but instead of keeping in mind that you should have that AI partner with you at all times to make it make sense, they just cut it out. It's weird. Mm-hmm. And the stuff... I I really wish we could have gotten... Even if it was still co-op, I still wish we could have gotten that thing where it's more of like a we don't know who to trust and we're on this foreign planet for like most of the game than dicking around in space for fucking 20 minutes. Out of curiosity, did you ever play Army of Two? I did. The second one was called. No. Two, two. Or no. Three. I played the first one. Does, does anyone care about spoilers for the Army of Two? No. Day? <laughs> Those games are oh, also like pretty racist, if I remember correctly, as far as depictions oh, of they, the Super folks, racist. They, they absolutely are. Okay, so... I'm not going to say it does like the separate perspective thing, whatever is dead space three, but you get to the end of the game and there's a choice you can make or you can, um, was you, you can, you can fight the evil dude or you can like take his offer and try to kill your partner. And so if you're playing co-op, you actually have to get into like legit ass boss fight against your friend. And it's That's really amazing. fucking sad. Like whoever loses it's, it's it's a fun way to end the game that I yeah. think a lot of people weren't expecting. Come out before or after <laughs> Spray Cell Conviction. I'm sorry. I talked over before. you, Sylvie. I'm sorry. It was honestly like those games are stupid as shit. That moment was pretty cool, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought that was pretty neat. You know what? They did something similar to that in um, this is one of the worst Resident Evil games. Resident Evil uh, Operation Raccoon City, where you're playing oh, as God, you know, you're game. playing you're playing as like um, umbrella operatives. And you get to the end of the game and like you're supposed to go through, you know, the typical journey. We're the bad guys, but suddenly we're going to work for the good guys because we had a fucking change of heart, whatever bullshit. Right. Um, so at the end of the game, you have the choice of let's save Leon and Claire. We have to help them go finish their mission or you can choose to to fucking kill them. Like it's a what if scenario, whatever. Yeah. Um, and you and your co-op partner, if you're playing co-op. Uh, you can make separate decisions. So if you if you conflict, you have to gun down. You have to not only gun down your co-op partner, but you have to. So I, I was playing with a co-op partner. He's he wanted the achievement to save them. I wanted the achievement to kill them. And I, I didn't tell him what I was planning on doing. So I chose kill at the last second. He's like, oh, dude, you're such a fucking dick. I'm so close to getting this achievement. We're playing on hard, whatever. Uh, gunned him down, gunned down Leon, gunned down Claire. I'm just like, I'm sorry, dude, but I had to. <laughs> It was uh, it was a legitimately a good moment in a very bad game. Hmm. I was gonna say that moment sounds way too cool for that game. It is entirely way too cool for that game. I it's, think more uh, more media should have the balls to be like, yeah, we we're a spinoff in this universe, but fuck it, we're doing something different than canon because fuck you. Even if yeah. it makes the game itself non-canon, I don't care. Just do yeah. cool shit that's stupid. Yeah, the Star Killer DLC for for uh, yeah, Force yeah, Unleashed. We kill Han Solo. Kill yeah, but, yeah, but Star Wars universe. <laughs> you obliterate Obi Wan's ghost in that, don't you? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It's so good. I think you kill everybody in the Force Unleashed games, right? I think at one I point th- you kill Leia too. Yeah. Oh wow. Was it, cause in the in the first ones DLC you can kill Obi Wan. 
Ghost of the, still be yeah, because the um in because for Force Unleashed it was the D because at the end of the game you got to choose between dark and light side and so yeah. the DLC was if you chose dark and the sequel mm-hmm. was if you chose light. Yeah, and then the, there's stuff in the second one also, right? I don't remember the. Second I don't know. I, I know that's one. a clone. That's Sam Witwer, but a clone. That's it's all liter- I know about. It's the literally one. the plot of of uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Are you a clone or are you not? You don't know. Wait, Shadow the Hedgehog was a clone in that game? Well, see, you need to play the saga known as Sonic Heroes to really figure out I've is he an android? Sonic is Heroes. he a clone? Mm. Do you remember that do you remember at the end of Sonic Heroes where you play a shadow that. and you walk into the room and there's like a big old freaking hallway of shadows just hanging out in green freaking tub machines? I should remember that because I know I played through at least the hero and dark like storylines. How did this become a fucking Sonic Heroes podcast? You're talking about clones, and it's literally the same plot as um. Like, what, of, were we, what were we just talking about? We were Force talking Unleashed. about Star Wars. Yes, yeah, uh, Force Unleashed too. It's it's the same plot. Something of a clone saga, you could say. I exactly. bet Sam Witwer could do a pretty good Shadow the Hedgehog voice. Absolutely. You, you know what's really dumb about Shadow the Hedgehog? It's mm. so depend because you can get multiple endings. There's like twenty plus, even though there's like one canonical whatever. Honestly, we're, we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna ignore the con- part of that game. That's that uh, there's so many endings. Yeah, and like, like aside from that canonical one, like depending on like whatever actions you do, it somehow manages to rewrite the past where you can totally be an android, you can totally be a clone, mm-hmm. or you can just straight up be like the legit shadow. It's just like I, that doesn't make sense. It's it, it it's dumb. Are you ten out of ten. Game of the game of the year. Why are no. you expecting Sonic the Hedgehog to make sense? That's all I gotta say to you. I don't know. Is I, that I have RPG I have any good? Oh, the Bioware one. Yeah, I, I people don't... had high hopes for that. Isn't I've the heard Bioware people were one... very disappointed in it. Isn't that the one that that has the temp music and it's terrible? Oh I, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, like placeholder music. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, it's really bad. Someone got an email really? after that game was like, released. You know, like you know, um, was it Basement from RE One? No. Like the in- the no. entire soundtrack. The entire no. soundtrack. You're lying. No, There's not. no way. <laughs> Send me a yeah. link later, and I will look at that. <laughs> we'll, we will, we'll, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. Oh my god! It's so anyway, bad. let's get on to the next story. We forgot to put oh, the yeah, final stories. music in the whole game. <laughs> wait, I, I'm sorry, I was fixing my camera. What happened? Wait, wait, wait! I heard sports. Are we going to talk about Conor McGregor getting his ass spanked like a? Blah. I know nothing. About I sports. fucked it up. Whatever. I hate him. He's a homophobe, and I'm glad he broke his own ankle. Mm. Yes, I I agree with this. I know nothing about Connor, but yes. What's his last name? McGregor. 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 Okay. Most yeah. stereotypical Irish last name I could think what's, of. What's yeah, fuck next that guy. A Super yeah, Robot fucked. Wars Thirty. A Robot <laughs> Wars Thirty. <laughs> Is this the first I, Super Robot Wars to get localized? I'm seriously this will asking. Be the first Super Robot Wars game to ever get localized in the West, ever. They have never brought a Super Robot Wars to the West. Was um, there ever one that, that had an English language? Way. Sorry, uh, go on. I want to say there's a couple in various Asian regions that have... Yeah, they're um, released in Hong Kong or something. Yeah, like Hong Kong and shit like that. Yeah. Um, that, have a, that have an English translation that you could buy off like PlayAsia or whatever. Yeah. Shout out to Hong Kong. Shout out to Hong Kong. Shout out to Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can pick it up there, but it's never been officially released in the West. But this new one... Uh, Super Robot Wars 30 is coming out October 27th, and it's going to be on Steam uh, and completely in English. Nice. Uh, it looks like there's less crossovers for this one, which is probably why. Um, they dropped Macross recently, and Macross and Robotech has always been a nightmare uh, licensing-wise. Oh, so that's yeah. That's probably what held it back for a really long time. I was about uh, to ask. This is the game that's literally like every yeah, robot so- you can think of. Yeah, Super Robot War, it's a giant anime mech crossover RPG, so it's got, like, Gundam, and it's got, like, Code Geass, and fucking Mazinger, and Galgagar. Any any giant robot anime you'd like is probably in a Super Robot Wars. This one has nice. a lot that look pretty cool, too. 
I'm excited. My friend Gal Gygar, he's my favorite. My friend has trying been trying to get me to play the Super Robot War series for about a decade yeah. now because uh, he I mean, he one... imports them. Mm-hmm. So I may actually play this one since yeah, it's uh, it'd be a decent one to jump in. It's a pretty fun tactical RPG. It's from what I understand, actually a little boring. And the fun part is just watching the cool animations, but um, no, that's fair enough. Best part is watching like the YouTube video after it comes out of all the super attacks. Tactical RPG, like Final Fantasy Tactics, like Isometric? Uh, not as good as Tactics, but yeah, probably about the same. Is it more like a classic Fire Emblem, maybe? Maybe a bit closer to Fire Emblem. All right. I think there's less verticality. Fire Emblem is a, is, a, is a dirty word around here, Nexus. That implies a lot of nonsense you can get into. I, I specified yeah. older Fire Emblem before it became bullshit. <laughs> I've played the before, first Fire Emblem. You mean before it became profitable. Yeah, yeah it's profitable bad. bullshit. It, it literally saved the franchise as soon as you can start doing it. Literally all that saved shit. the franchise. Now everyone knows who Marth is. Everyone's just like, I mean, yeah. this is blue haired idiot in my Smash Brothers. And I'll be real. Know. Yeah, if Mark, I have to do that chick from Awakening with the mask. I'm gonna be real. If I gotta fuck it, if I gotta put conversion therapy in my game to make it profitable, you know what? I think I'd rather the series be dead. Wait, is, there's not conversion know. therapy in there, is that's, there? Not that one. I'm just saying in general, all the weird well, bullshit that, that they keep putting like in fire. Somebody around. who's not profitable. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. Jesus Christ. They didn't need that part to be profitable. But some sure. of the other parts, you gotta sell. You gotta sell me this game where you you can't date this person. Yeah. Like, for how much? I I swear, Blaine, that that young girl is actually like a thousand year old dragon. So it's totally cool. No, nope. yeah, she's a thousand year old dragon. Uh, she's a thousand years. If old. anything, you, like thirty. If, if anything, on. she's the pedo. Come on. Yeah, oh my god. Exactly. exactly. Listen, listen, listen. I didn't want it to get to this point. I was about to say, I can't mock anybody because I'm still over here sitting playing a fucking Warhammer game, which is one arguably one of the most Rob racist me. fucking things I've ever seen in my life. The Cradle Ooh. Rob recipient, if you will. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Shit. Go ahead, Tales of Symphonia. Isn't that in that too? Isn't there like a character that's like she looks like she's six, but she's actually like ten thousand or some bullshit? Is that the new one? Is no, that just... that's the the one from the GameCube. Oh, but the dude who looks like Vash the Sam P, but he's not. I Bash don't know anything Stampede. about Tail. Oh, Lloyd, right? Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. like she's like a girl with red hair. <laughs> the only reason why I know Lloyd is because he was in Super Smash Flash too. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> he has a coat like Vash the Stampede's brother. No, no, not his brother. Because he actually has a brother. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, a mm-hmm. non. Fucking, yeah. uh, content, uh, what is it? Copyright, uh, non-specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his, um, his, uh, Mexican non-union equivalent, yeah. Yes. How, how much can you chalk this up to to just, like, straight-up anime bullshit? Mostly. 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 That's I'd, I'd say, yeah. Wait, what was the next topic? I completely sidelined. I completely destroyed our train of thought. Oh, yeah, I just stole like, it to talk about Super Robot oh, Wars. Yeah, was it, it was going to happen eventually. I figure I'd just let Nexus go off for like five minutes I got to so. mention Super Smash Flash too, so I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Jose, yes. what's the topic? Back to our regularly scheduled programming for uh, so, hey, some, some Robot Wars of the Super Variety. <laughs> Save us from ourselves, Jose. The, this, this, the three of you, the perfect freaking storm of chaos, and I, I fucking love it. You get a love bunch of people of with it. Well, I have ADHD. I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I'm just, uh, I, I can't be war, held responsible. Is the war where between my the super go. robots or the super robots fighting in the war? Uh, what makes, what makes the war so super? Or is it the robots know, that are super? As they say in those, in those cool ads for the, for the taco shells, por que no los dos? Why can't you have both? Mm, mm, I you see, have both I see, of them I see. at the same time. I mean, uh, that girl's got to be like hard. twenty now, huh? Uh, they're what's really the... strong, and they shoot big laser blasts and have what's cool the, swords. Uh, what's the one that's based on Batman again? I don't know, fucking remember. Batman. Mazinger. It looks. A yeah. Bit like wait, that. no, not Mazinger. No, the um, the one that's based on the animated series. Oh shit! Like big the, something. The whatever. Batman animated series. Yeah, Batman the animated series. There's a super robot that's based on it. It's like a big black one with big arms. Big O? 
Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is kind of based on I was going to ask, is Big O in that game, actually? I don't think so. I feel like he wouldn't only because, There's well, they wouldn't. Because they're too big and slow. For this game, honestly, it looks like it's pretty crossover light. So that's probably why this one got localized so easy. Mm -hmm. Wait, is is the Iron Giant in there? Uh, Shut the yeah. fuck up. Is the, no, the, the like, like, representative? Like, like, legit, this isn't legit player question. one. <laughs> This is a legit question, Sylvia. I need they to don't know. Have Iron Giant money, Jose. Yeah. You know he doesn't want to fight, right? Non-crossovers, and yeah, he's not in there. He's oh, fuck this game. Fuck this fighter. game. Uh, but it's got Magic Sword, Magic Knight, Ray Earth. That's pretty exciting. These are poor Ray concessions. These are horrible concessions. Exactly. He looks, this, isn't... He looks pretty cool. yeah. he's awesome. This is Gun bullshit. Sword? What's Gun X Sword? It has that. I think there's is a it Gun Cross there. Sword? I don't see any robots when I look up that name. Gun X Sword, Gun Cross Sword. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's got quadruple S grid, man. That's that. So why don't we Netflix. cross to the next People topic, like Jose? Yeah, let's yes. Cross yeah, yeah. Hey. I, I, I have this. This topic is dead to me. It doesn't have Iron Giant. Fuck this game. Final um, Fantasy X is twenty years old. Yeah. Everybody, fucking either yeah, ask Final what the Fantasy fuck is crossed. Final Fantasy X. Or shut up, Amazon. <laughs> or feel old like me. It's one of the best hey, ones. That game Absolutely. is great. It's beautiful. It has, uh, anyway, it on to the next topic. I legitimately was uh, trying to predict what the next topic was. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, I, I have the power. It's the perfect I, teenage I'm, game. Valve I'm is the releasing Con. the Steam Deck. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> We'll pretend the last hour didn't happen, and we'll just talk about the Steam Deck again. <laughs> uh, okay, next story. Uh, PlayStation head of Worldwide Studios, Herman Hulse, announced that Dutch studio Nix's uh, software has been officially acquired by Sony and welcomed to the greater PlayStation first-party development portfolio. Uh, unlike most household names under Sony's wing, Nexus Studio has primarily served as a support team on countless games over the years, with an emphasis on PC ports such as Square Enix's Marvel's mm -hmm. Avengers. Uh, the commonly held theory and speculation behind the move is that Sony is making an active of, I'm sorry, to, to make an active effort to bolster and strengthen their PC portfolio following on the initially mixed reception of Horizon Zero Dawn's PC de debut and the well-received uh, Days Gone ports. Uh, as stated previously on the show, while both ports function fantastically at, the po at this point, the former Horizon Zero Dawn uh, demands far more power than what's displayed on screen, more than likely the result of optimization issues. Um. Yeah, uh, Sony could sure could sure as hell use help on their PC initiative, as their direct competitor Microsoft's approach with day one PC ports available on Game Pass has indisputably blown Sony's efforts out of the water. Um, general thoughts on Sony pushing for more PC games? Uh, good, it's good. It's the right choice. Yeah, I I think it's important they get stuff out specifically day one. Because what Horizon yeah. came out three years after the fact, mm -hmm. I believe the same for for Days Gone. Yeah, yeah like as much. You go. Ahead. Ahead. Oh, I was just going to say they they Uncharted Four is also going to be coming to PC. That was a previous yeah. story that we had done. It's mm -hmm. just like like it's nice. Like I'm a sucker. I'll I'll probably buy their games. Whatever I'll play them. There's, it's the best way to play it. Higher frame rates, resolutions, whatever, whatnot. But it's just. So after the fact, it's it's comes off as like double dipping because yeah. it is yeah. really double dipping. I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, I'm, oh, you go on. So slowly phasing out the sort of air of uh, exclusivity. I mean, that's I, I can't say that's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, having more PC ports for games faster so that more people are able to play them or more people are able to play them on their preferred console. That's that's a great thing. Yeah. Um, and anyone who gets upset about it, you're, you know, you're a little baby. Basically, you need to get your like, diapers changed. Like as much as as much as I, we all rightfully made fun of that one idiot who was in charge of Days Gone or whatever. Like, there's a good. I don't know if he said this. I just really wanted to bring that up again. There's a good point to be made. Like, I wonder how much better that game could have done if it had a simultaneous PC release. Mm. Absolutely. Because it's not a terrible game. It's just a perfect. Mm. And I don't know, stuff like that. Uh, Modders would have had a fucking field day with it. Yeah, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, sale. like, yeah. I, I, think, 
I think just to touch on that specifically is that even though Days Gone did sell like fucking crazy, oh my camera keeps fucking up. Um, it did sell like crazy, but the issues that Sony had with that studio came down to the way that they handled production as well as uh, I forget the dude's name who was in charge, but they had issues with him. You could just call him dipshit. That that also works. <laughs> But no, I, I knew there was something I was forgetting. Like, I, I just, I don't know. So, like, to mirror what Sylvia said, just, I think this is probably ultimately a good thing. I can't think of it. Even if it feels gross right now, like, oh, they just released this after the fact. Like, this is just yeah. going to be something that needs to happen. It's also better they released it at all than not releasing it for those things and then just doing it going forward. Mm -hmm. What's not cool... And I don't know if this is a topic, Jose, that you have, but what's not great, and it's related, is the fact that because Judgment, Last Judgment was getting a PC release, that the talent agency that is in charge of, I forget his name, but he plays the main character in face and in voice, um, they're oh, like, you know no. Uh, we will actually get to that shortly. Okay, I didn't know if that's what we were segueing into or not. Continue, though, with whatever the next topic is. Um... Or, or Atma, Mesa, do you have any more thoughts on just the PC oh, sorry, yeah. in general? Oh. Um, yeah. I, like everyone said, I think it's a good thing. Um, I'm a little scared for Sony, though, I will be honest. Um, they're kind of they're kind of losing their ability to diversify. Absolutely. Um, they're kind of losing their relevancy in this conversation. I mean, there's. I mean, obviously, they're still relevant, but I mean, like, as they do this more, they're like, what, like, why, why, why would I buy a PlayStation then? You right. know, as time goes on, and this, if as time goes on, this this increases and accelerates, then it's like, uh, then what's this for? I want to say that's maybe even something that they're scared about about maybe doing like day one because they do mm -hmm. want people on their hardware. Um. Even though, like, Microsoft is totally embracing it because they, they are relying on Game Pass compared to, um, compared to, uh, I don't know where I was going. Well, I can't, but I, the, I can't at find the end of the day, that's those. still their, at the end of the day, that's still their platform, you know? Mm -hmm. That's still, dude, like, you're still playing on Windows. Um, you, you haven't left the Microsoft ecosystem. While with, with PlayStation, you know, you, you have to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that aspect i'm like you know what you know i i i like i like a diverse field for gaming i don't want it to become monolithic because then you know innovation slows um in, in, in a creative space like this um you know ideas don't necessarily spread um as well mm -hmm. um so that, that part that part that that's the only part that kind of worries me a little bit um, that if, there, if it becomes one show in town, then there's no, uh, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no diversity. Yeah. Right. I, I think it's like, like ideally if they came out like day and day, I think I would, part of me wants to say I'd play them on PC, but like so much of the appeals also like the dual sense. And is there any actual support for dual sense on, um, on windows in terms of like getting those other features? Uh, Windows, no. Probably Steam. I mean, Steam does, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Huh. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, we can go in and jump into the judgment stuff, because it's actually super interesting. It was a, I forgot to drag this up into the higher priority news stories for whatever yeah, reason. This is a very interesting it companion is. to the story we just talked about. Yeah. Fucking. Um, I'll I'll gonna read the story yeah. off. Uh, let's see. The upcoming title, Lost Judgment, might wind up being the last game of the series due to disagreements between the game's publisher Sega and the talent agency that represents the actor Takuya Kimura, who plays the leading role within the title. Uh, the specific reason behind the disagreement is an odd one, as Sega wants to put the game on Steam and the agency doesn't. Uh, while this may at first come off as a general tendency of Japanese developers and companies simply being adverse to PC platforms, uh, something that's been dying off in recent years, there's more of an initiative, uh, the real reason is beh behind it is tied to some particularly strict policies that the talent agency set forth in its contract, such as a stipulation that the game won't be on PC. 
Uh, the logic behind this being that the talent agency doesn't want Takuya Kimura's character to be modded on PC. As uh, many in our audience might be aware yeah. that nude mods are increasingly prevalent nowadays, um, as they always have been, but you know, there's meme culture and whatnot now. So they do not want their, um, they don't want their talent being modded and used in a way that they did not sign off on. That yeah. is the exact reason for it. Which is, I'll be honest, a fair one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was. I had my eyebrow raised that entire story until you got to that part. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, something that a a good friend of mine said, you know, um, if you're gonna be in a game, just expect the dick's gonna be in your mouth. That's just. I couldn't have said it better the, myself. Yeah, it's the name. Of the, it's the name of the business. It's like, it's like, I'll sit here all day and viciously chastise people for like let's say making porn of child car- ch- children's cartoons and not properly tagging shit or of children's cartoons with predominantly child characters I've said it so many times but as far as like adult media I don't ex- like when Mace- I can't say it any better than what Mason said right, just expect a breaks. dick in your mouth at some point or not a <laughs> dick, a vag or anything in between I mean but also even with, with console stuff couldn't they do, it's going to take a lot more work, but they can still mod it. It's just not going to be like as widespread. You oh, can yeah. just download Absolutely. whatever. They can take your picture. They can take the model out. They can do all sorts of shit. It's oh. basically a bunch of old Japanese uh, businessmen or business people, I'll say, because I don't want to assume. Just being like, no, that's not right. Was, no. Wasn't there a thing? kinds of issues, especially, I mean, with like, with that level of modding and, and and interactions with with talent agencies and stuff that's just something you're going to run into when you start uh, casting these high profile actors i mean mm-hmm. uh, takia kimura he's a huge actor in japan he's been a big actor since like the late he was 80s. an idol as well wasn't he like a yeah, really popular he was one? A musician and an actor since like i mean the late 80s till now he's a huge actor over there mm-hmm. Uh, for what it's worth, um, yeah. th- this game is on PC. We're, we're going to have to talk about Cyberpunk a little yeah. bit. Uh, Keanu Reeves, there was a nude mod that came out for... Um, or, I'm sorry, let me preface it. There, there was a mod that you could get into a heterosexual relationship with one of the characters who was a lesbian in the game. And that kind of, you know, that's kind of gross, goes against the character's yeah. wishes and whatnot. Uh, but there was... And, and that's still... I believe you can still download it um but there was a mod that would allow you to sleep with uh keanu reeves's character there's also a nude mod for it i believe and that got taken down like almost immediately and that was basically chalked up to uh keanu reeves's contract says like hey you can't bang me and you can't have me nude in your game um so uh cd project red was kind of quick to kind of stomp that out it's it's this it's a complicated situation for a lot of things because it's like the base, the, the most general idea I can lay it out as is that it's just not cool to sexualize actual people yeah. in general. It's not cool to make like photographically realistic pornography of real ass people. It's not okay. Yeah. It's stalkerish. It's really gross. When I say, when I mirror what my son said, or rather what my son's friend said, I'm not saying, well, I don't think any of us mean that as like a, and that it means it's okay. We're like, well, no, it's people Absolutely are going to do not. that shit. And I don't, and I understand. It's like taking I would understand your car. No, exactly. But at the same time, I understand the logic of like, if this is going to happen, we don't want to be involved. But I don't think you having it on Steam is the answer. Is like, don't have mm-hmm. it on Steam or don't have it on PC is not the answer. That's cutting your nose off to spite your face. Yeah. If anything, what it should be is Sega should have some things in place of like, if those mods do start popping up. I don't know, like how either I, I, I not I usually don't suggest this lightly, but like start slinging out those cease and desists if that's what you need to do to protect that person, mm-hmm. or if it's using someone's likeness, if it's not a cease and desist, because necess- I don't think it's called a cease and desist, but I know at least in North America and United States law, if you if you, if you, you can't take a picture of a person specifically, you cannot use a person's likeness without the permission. And part and parcel, you can't use a, if they've agreed to let their license to something. You can't take that and reuse it and repurpose it if it's specifically their likeness. If it's a cartoon character, that's murky. If it's an actual person's face, you can sue. It's I know people who have actually gotten shit shut down, 
like people who are stalking them online specifically because of like copyright law that it was pictures of their face and shit. Mm -hmm. The things I've seen done to Stephanie Justin. Oh, geez. remind me who oh, Stephanie Justin is. The actress quiet. for Quiet from yeah. Metal Gear Solid. 5. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beyond yeah. just like Rule Thirty Four. That's a deep fake. Right, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a deep that's fake. Awesome. That's not even a deep fake. That's just like straight fucking up. What it is? No, yeah, that's like, and I can completely understand them wanting to put as many layers in front of that as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I agree. I don't think this is the, the this, this is the move. I don't think this is the move. No. Yeah, it's um, it's, I, uh, it's not as simple as recasting him either. Like, uh, no, it's not an actor that big. Like obviously to a Western audience like us, it's not as big a deal to have that actor in particular and have his likeness. But to the, like the Japanese crowd that plays that game, it is a really big deal that he's in it. Let's not beat around mm -hmm. the bush. The main target demographic is that yeah. crowd, and they're the, the main ones who are target gonna be demographic are the people who are like, "Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I like this actor. I'll pick this game." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not even you, just Yakuza fans. I, I think it basically comes down to what Blaine said. Just like this is like a very overstepping method of they can't do they, there is something they can do they can do the cd project thing where they do try to actively stomp it out if it does happen which it, pro, it is going to happen but especially with with yakuza they're, they're trying to get into more of a western demographic they've had a huge push on xbox they they want their games on steam and it the series is like seen a crazy freaking uh revitalization specifically because of that um yeah. It, it it also reminds me of this happened with I believe the first was judgment I, I, I can be wrong I believe Mesa recalls it. it was either judgment or Yakuza 4 where the person they cast for a uh, character both, both. both. Yeah. both. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I forget I was gonna get into that if you two yeah. didn't get into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll I'll talk about the Yakuza 4 one. So Yakuza 4 came out is fine, whatever. Um the actor got involved in like some kind of drugs or something, so like okay. So for the yeah. there you go, um, but so for the remaster they did a couple years back, they just completely recast and they don't want to have anything to do with him. Like typically, yeah. like American companies, they don't fucking bother. It's whatever someone does coke, what whatever they they don't give a shit. Um, but yeah, just completely recast him, and uh, yeah. I believe believe a very similar thing happened with um, or Mesa. If you want to go with this, you probably know more of the details for Judgment. I don't. Oh, okay. Well, for what at least I recall, uh, it was uh, the, the like actor, they were... or one of the top build actors in Judgment uh, was arrested and and brought to trial over I don't know if it was a trial or whatever. He's arrested for possession of cocaine and like, I mean, drugs like that over in Japan is like if if a mm -hmm. major figure is found with them like that they're not a major figure anymore. They they yeah, they're fade blacklisted. away. Like you, they're blacklisted by by like any town agency or any oh, it's so frustrating them, which is incredibly frustrating especially it's... when he's in a game playing a member of the yakuza <laughs> it, yeah. it's such it's such like a polar opposite to like hollywood and its entire yeah. culture it's just like we can just assume basically everyone's on fucking cocaine. drugs mm -hmm. i've only I'm heard at... sorry miss on you go no my, my my point didn't matter it's fine you go i think your I've point only... always matters mesa I've only heard of one All points like, matter. known person in Japanese off. media. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the fuck? This is, this is when we mute my son's microphone and remove him from the call. <laughs> Oh my god. The, the, um, just a sly little clever way you whisper that in your microphone. We were just <laughs> talking he, about this. Didn't and, 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 to hear it. and the <laughs> small smirk that he makes, knowing that oh. like... Oh. We were just talking about this. Mesa is entirely too fucking smooth. He'll just drop it and, and just oh. wait for that fucking bomb to go off. Oh my god. Oh okay, okay. I, I, I'm gonna try and save this now. The only person in Japanese media that I can think of that like actually didn't completely lose their career permanently was the singer uh, Yasuyuki Okamura, 
Um, for those of you who don't know him, he fantastic musician, fantastic singer, fantastic dancer. He's most probably well known in the West for doing the Space Dandy opening theme, and I believe multiple songs within Space. Definitely one song in Space Dandy. I want to say multiple, but I know for sure one. Um, he was arrested for. Sorry, I'm double checking the wiki right now. Um, he had a career like as early as the 80s. He was arrested for possession of stimulants in 2003. In 2005, he was arrested for attempting to use cocaine in a Shibuya record store bathroom, which I just want to say, anti- whatever the opposite is of a shout out to the dumb motherfucker who saw like a popular music star doing coke in a bathroom went, I'm going to snitch on this bitch. Like, fuck you. Um, and in 2007, he managed to have a comeback and he is now still a successful musician and dancer. He just did a collab with uh, Daiko, who is the person who worked with Teddy Lloyd on Me, 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 as well as other things. And um, they did like the opening song to a new anime by from the dude who made uh, Trigun. I know that sounded like I just did a big disjointed, disconnected thing, but I promise you it's accurate. Um, but yeah, no, like he had it's why if you look at his like discography, there's this giant fucking gap of work. Yeah. And like, I legitimately can't think of anyone else who has actually come back from that. And it, 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 it's just, especially when you think about like, I think, I'm pretty sure my boyfriend put it this way once. Like, it, when you think about like the entertainment industry and how things like stimulants, like cocaine and stuff like that, um, are just so in, ingrained in those industries. And I, I again, I, I don't personally want to pretend like I know how the Japanese industry, uh, film industry idol industry whatever works but it's just it, it to when you have this essentially this thing that can blacklist you like you can get you like bleh. basically the point you guys started making you can have that shit to get you completely ripped out of a game like you never existed but you can be you can then be you can be the fucking creator of Veroni kenshin and get arrested for having child pornography bring that up yep i was gonna bring that up yeah yep. yep. you're fine <laughs> Yeah, and you can you be get, you get you get uh, get back out there a little scamp as they you ruffle your hair and fine, slap you on. And a out. couple years later, you're back in Shonen Jump. Yeah, Jesus you can be the creator Christ. of Toriko, also get ch- child pornography, and you can have Ichiro Oda, the creator and artist and writer of One Piece, defend you online, Water and then everyone pretends you didn't do it. Yeah, you know, Blaine, if oh, you man. if you decide to get addicted. To cocaine and then you come you want to come back on the show i'd welcome you back on that's right it decided yeah. to get addicted to cocaine that's, yes. how, that's how it works that, yeah. that's how you do it you, you go to the cocaine mm-hmm. store you're like Sorry. please sir can i have one crippling addiction please i already yeah. smoke a lot of weed so i think that's Let's enough see, but yeah see if, uh, well i would be smoking oh, a lot oh, of weed if oh, I go. T- tangent tangent um why Very am i getting license. youtube ads about fucking rehabilitation for marijuana like like legit just like have you has your life been <laughs> severely crippled by a marijuana a- Cause addiction because people, people don't ma- understand the difference between a chemical addiction and a personal reliance <laughs> how many marijuanas have you injected in your veins today yeah I, yeah i was i'm so drugstore i injected fella, it looks like uh <laughs> looks like the fella from resident evil 4 and he says you want some cocaine the first box is free and he gives you a box of cocaine and then you immediately become addicted and you come mm-hmm. back to him and he says the second box is four thousand dollars and you're like no no <laughs> well, i'm addicted that's, that's how drugs work yeah, exactly someone did try someone did try to sell me cocaine by that uh 7-eleven by your house wait really <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. like what you just <laughs> went in to get something. Like, were they outside or they? It's... Yeah, they're outside. And, like, it took me a while to realize what they were asking. Like, it was. Oh, uh, dude, no, I don't no, even no. pay those dudes no, anymore. No, I'm good. When people you talk to me, I just fucking walk on past. I don't give a fuck. Dude. Well, sometimes they have side quests, and it was yeah. nice to do them. <laughs> even if you end up canceling the side quest halfway through, it's worth seeing oh. what it could have been. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to mainline day. this, Mason. I don't got time for for repeat side quests. Like, I'm good. Like legit, the guy I spoke okay. to the guy's like, "Hey, can you buy me some cigarettes?" The guy in there doesn't like me. I was like, "Sure." Is there? That's <laughs> how it's. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a side quest. Mason, <laughs> if, if you're playing something like Fallout, there's no reason to to take these drugs. They do nothing for you. Why would you do that? 
when I when I was night when I turned nineteen and that was the legal smoking age in New York, uh, the first side quest of my life opened up when my manager, who is like fifteen or sixteen, was like, "Hey, will you go buy me cigarettes?" And I bought him cigarettes. Well, he might have been seventeen. I don't know, but still, he was. I shouldn't have done what I did, but I did it. Statute of limitations. Yeah. Hmm. They can't ask my mom to testify against me. Let's do one more news story. That was a joke. Don't actually accept that as legal advice. Oh, shit. I have Everyone a friend who, who's if, in, in law school, so I can give legal advice. Just so you know. If, mm. if, if you need cigarettes, but the cashier doesn't like you, hit up Mesa, I guess. I don't know. As long as you can. What, what, what's, what's the smoking age now in California? 21? Is it? Yeah, it's 21. Know. It's not 18. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, it did go cool. up. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It should be 21, and drinking age should be 18. <clears throat> it just got uh, more expensive here, and then the fees for it go towards some, some shit. Hopefully it doesn't get funny before. like they do in Australia. How is it funny in Australia? in Australia? They just show you, like, destroyed body parts, and, like, this is what you do. <laughs> I mean, that's probably the way to go about it, right? <laughs> It, it doesn't seem to affect it that much. So you're telling me that the, that the fucking... Well, they, that's because they live in hell. They're used to shit hold being Hold on, fucked up. hold on. You're, you're, you're telling me that the fucking joke from Clerks directed by Kevin Smith where a dude is in a, in a, in a convenience store and pulls out a fucking diseased lung is now an actual thing that happens in convenience stores in Australia? Yes, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn, Australia's fucking based. Uh, based in yeah. smoke Based in disease pilled. Ooh, Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> oh, shit. What's the last news topic, Jose? Let's, the let's... Steam. What's it called? Oh fuck Steam off! Link? I will oh, mute your ass. I already forgot. <laughs> no, really. What is the last topic? <laughs> we're, we're coming up on time. Oh, <laughs> just to just to wrap around quick, my Australian friend says that um, people who smoke collect the boxes. Try try to get them all. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck. That's it, fantastic. Yeah, we, we started a little late, so we got we still have some time. <laughs> um, last year's Ghost of Tsushima by Sucker Punch is receiving a new a next gen upgrade in the form of a director's cut on August twentieth. It'll also be released on PS4. Uh, it's going to include all post launch content as well as a brand new adventure on Iki Island. Uh, it's going to be a whole big narrative expansion and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, PS5 users are going to receive a wave of new features absent in the PS4 iteration, including Japanese lip sync. Yeah, uh, haptic, finally. Yeah, haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, 3D audio, improved load times, 4K resolution options, and 60 FPS. Other additional updates include accessibility options, such as alternative controller layouts, hiding your quiver, apparently. And most importantly, being able to enable lock-on during combat is kind of a weird exclusion from the regular game. Oh, they're finally um, putting it in, red. Yeah. Um, don't know why it's an accessibility thing, but I'll fucking take it. Um, the director's cut will be $70 on PS5 and 60 on PS4, with options to upgrade available via PSN, depending on what version you're upgrading to and what platform, whatever. It's kind of convoluted. Um, I also want to just combine this with the Death Stranding uh, director's cut that's going to be coming out that it has some added um, features and apparently it's also going to have some story content. It's mm -hmm. going to be like some more tools, some more cool, crazy shit you can pull off. Uh, albeit that's going to be a $10 up upgrade, so maybe not as beefy as an entirely new like section of the map to go to and whatnot. Do we already do, we already um, do the joke for, for, for Death Stranding? What's the joke? You know, director's cut. I thought Why that was the problem. Oh yeah, that, that's what that's what I got into. And okay. I, I was going to rip had... into this a lot harder than I was originally, but then Kojima came out and said like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, that, it, it makes no sense to call us a fucking director's cut because Kojima had like it absolute." It's your company, Kojima. Tech don't call it it's, that. <laughs> it's it's a little more complicated than that. But but so what Kojima was getting across was that. You know, a director's cut for a film, it's like, this is not the theatrical cut, this is directors putting in all the content that they wanted, maybe didn't make it for whatever particular reason, producers, theatrical, whatever. Uh, but Kojima had complete control over his game from the very beginning, everything that's going to be added in here wasn't stuff left on the cutting room floor, this is all additional content, he's elaborated on that. Um, the reason behind the director's cut, and why Ghost of Tsushima is also using the same branding, and I would assume that basically all upgraded versions of uh, play of uh, Sony first party titles are going to use the same thing 
is because you know Sony's trying to build up this this mm -hmm. prestige around their game, just like oh look, we're we're better than fucking definitive editions. We're fucking director cut. We're fucking cinema. We're fucking prestige ass shit right here. Um, so this is entirely a Sony initiative, like uh, like 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 you're pointing the finger at kojima and like initially i was too just like oh look at this fucking pretentious motherfucker who already had complete control and now he's making director's cut on top of that um yeah no it's it's totally 100 percent a sony thing can't wait for yeah. the last of us 2 director's cut where they add the multiplayer <laughs> mm. last <laughs> of us remake director's cut have a lot of thoughts on death stranding director's cut even though i don't want to I, and I prefer to think about it as little as possible, but like there's the, the whole expansion of like the combat for Death Stranding makes so little sense to me because like the combat in Death Stranding original was not particularly great, but I felt like it was by design that it wasn't good. Yeah, because you don't want to get into combat. Like, you like yeah. you don't want to shoot dudes. Like narratively, like, that makes really bad shit happen. And Death Stranding doesn't feel good because obviously Sam wouldn't know how to shoot a gun good or her how to stab someone off a pole good. Like he hasn't trained for it because he's not supposed to do it. it. Makes sense contextually. And it doesn't feel good to do it in the game because you're not supposed to do it. And, yeah, because because like to, uh, uh, to just like roll just, back on that and just make your make your narrative or make your narrative. I don't know, just just real quick, Nexus. Like, is if, if someone or, dies um, in uh, if someone dies in Death Stranding, doesn't that cause like the big old nuke freaking thing to happen? Yeah, yeah avoid out the map permanently. You can get a game over from it for not dealing with it fast enough too. Hmm. And it just rolls. If you, yeah, yeah, and if you accidentally kill someone, um, there's a there's a there's a um, body disposal place at the beginning of the game that you have to carry them to. Yeah. Shit. Like I don't know, just to make the messaging of your game worse, so that it feels it's more fun to play. So I don't know. I think it's really lame. Next, Especially so I, coming I, from someone like Kojima. I I know you have some general thoughts on Death Stranding that haven't necessarily been elaborated on the show. Did you want to? maybe air some uh, of that i don't know i just don't like the game very much it's very fun to play i think it's disgustingly sexist uh it's a, another kojima world where it's just a nightmare to be a woman in it uh the just the actual itemization of female characters in the game and i don't know it's just a nightmare and I, I also d didn't find the story particularly good you have a lot of these characters that are just like Hideo Kojima's friends scanned in and they're just his dolls that he plays with and they're not really characters. They don't do anything. Um, a game that I like to play is, I say, uh, let's look at Paramedic from MGS3, right? What is Paramedic like? What does she enjoy when you talk to her? I, I want to say, just as a general rule, like like any piece of media, this is the exact test I like to do yeah. to tell if a character is fucking well defined. It's yeah. like, can you take this character outside of that context? Can you place him in a bar talking to another person, and can you like fully actualize what their personality yeah. is? How would they would how they would react to shit? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I fucking Paramedic, love that test. She, uh, she likes movies. She particularly likes like Godzilla and stuff like that. She's actually really passionate about medical history, and she likes like sweets and candy and stuff. What does Dead Man like? The or what, what's the Guillermo del Toro's character is a dead man. I don't fucking know. Nah, what does like, he like? There's Die Hard Man, and yeah, there's Die Hard. Man. No, I think he is Dead Man. Or yeah. something. He's Dead Man. Yeah, yeah. like. You maybe had something interesting going for you where like he makes he like makes the accidental Metal Gear Solid reference and you maybe could have gone that way of like, oh, he likes video games. Maybe every once in a while he calls Sam and is like, oh, wow, Sam, this is just like the video game Horizon Zero Dawn for the PlayStation 4. Maybe you could have done something interesting with that. But instead, it's just a guy that looks like Guillermo del Toro that like shoots exposition at you. And it's just kind of meaningless. Anyway, I don't like Kojima that. That's basically my condensed thoughts on Death Stranding. For someone who said they weren't going to give their condensed thoughts, you're sure to give your condensed thoughts. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm going to bother going back to Death Stranding for the director's cut. I, I did my one playthrough. I think I'm good. Um, 
I will probably pick up the uh, the director's cut for uh, Ghost of, Ghost of oh, Tsushima, absolutely. though, because it's just a fucking fun game, and there's going to be a big old chunk of extra content. I still um, need to I'm, play Legends. I really want to... I haven't touched it. I've heard like so many good things it's about it. Fun. I haven't played yeah. much of it, but it's it's all been really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have spent entirely too many hours, 100% in Ghost of Tsushima. So when the director's cut comes out, I'm going to do it again. going to do the extra content. I am absolutely down for it. I think we have a slight echo on somebody. I think um, it's Blaine. It might, I just unmuted my mic. Okay. Uh, Blaine, do you have any thoughts? Anything? Um, the only thoughts I have are that I think anybody getting upset about using the term director's cut needs to go shout at Francis Ford Coppola, Ridley Scott, and William Friedkin, and whatever the directors have bastardized that term already, because it's never meant anything as far as marketing. Um, the Exorcist I, I would, direct. I would disagree with that to an extent. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, but when when there's two director's cuts of Apocalypse Now and neither one of them are called the director's cut, they're called Redux and Final Cut, when the director's cut of Blade Runner is not a director's cut, it's a... What is it? It was, a, it was an archivist that did it, but like with, a, with, some, with notes and approval from Ridley Scott, but Ridley Scott didn't like oversee it directly. He didn't control it. It wasn't his cut. Um, when... They talk about there's the director's cut of The Exorcist, and we'll know there's the original theatrical cut that is the director's cut, but it's not called the director's cut. There's the version you've never seen, which is the writer's cut. Like, I'm, the point I'm getting at is I just think it's dumb to get hung up about misuse of a term like that when it has been misused so much already. In well, I, 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 get I the think... Snyder cut. Yes, that's, that's the one example that is yeah. that is accurate. <laughs> that is a director's cut if I ever saw one. I, I think we can always point to like outliers and like regards of how numerous they are, just where it has been abused, like even in cinema. But just like the what the terminology for it's supposed to be, I don't think that just just because there, there are outliers doesn't excuse the further abuse of it. Yeah, like it, uh, it does, it does yeah. concretely. It is supposed to mean something. I'm just saying it hasn't in like sixty years, so. I, 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 historically, I, I absolutely factually disagree with you. Give me a movie. I'll look it up. I'm, I will admit I'm wrong if I'm wrong, but I'm ready to. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I have my major in cinema. I, I've watched many a movie, my friend. No, no, I know you have. I don't mean like you don't know what you're talking about. I just mean like if there's a movie I'm forgetting that has used that as its descriptor and was not just marketing bullshit is what I'm asking. Because the ones I always I, think I, of that would people go to are just marketing bullshit. Well, I think that's just because those are the outliers we know. But anyway, let's let's. So I got too stuck on on this. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. Who else is going to? Is anyone here going to replay uh, Death Stranding just for the director's cut? Or no? Does it count if I never Probably played not. it to begin with? <laughs> I played it I once. Played. It was fine. I'm not going to play that again. It was fun. You see, if, if we had yeah, Sarah I, and I, Corey on here, they would, they would both be very ecstatic game, about it. What was that, Nexus? I can say plenty of positive stuff about the gameplay. The gameplay. Oh, yeah. I love driving the truck around. It's great. Because whenever a character yeah. opens their mouth, it's like, hey, just stop. I want to deliver stop. packages to Sam Lake and get a thumbs up. Yeah, I want I, the... Aunt I want the anti-director's cut where they eliminate yes. all the Kojima bullshit just and the just have the gameplay. Take <laughs> the cutscenes and those shitty ass boss fights at the end out, and then it's great. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm never gonna play that game again. I'm I'm good. You know, but what? Ghost of Tsushima. I'll play it again. Directors, you director's cut, as in it cuts the director out. Ah, hell yeah, I'll yeah, play that. that. Mm -hmm. The real definition. The real director's cut. If I've never played the game, <laughs> should I play the director's cut first, or should I play the original first? I, I would assume the director's cut. I don't know. Look, just you can you can watch it. I mean, watch the, the the only positive thing I can say is that I I think it's nearly impossible to add more Kojima bullshit in a director's mm -hmm. cut. Like, Probably. the game was already full of it, so mm -hmm. I don't know how much more could be added. 
Yeah. I got actually upset at that one. At that the reveal about the name. Uh huh. I got oh, so angry. <laughs> Wait, the name. <laughs> yeah, the name. Is are we talking uh, spoiler thing at the a end? A little bit, or? you know, Amelie. I I don't remember that to be honest. Character with more names than person. Do we care? Right? Is are we safe? Do we care? Hey, hey, we we're at the end of the show anyway, so hey. Yeah. Uh warning, warning. Warning. Death warning. Stranding spoilers. Wow, wow, I, I'll wow. take my headphones off. Okay. okay. So the character Amelie at the very end says that their name actually is I'm a lie. God. <laughs> or I don't even <laughs> remember genius. that and that sounds I fucking that Coach Juba is a genius. Oh, I got so angry at that. Uh yep. Every everything in that goddamn game. Like I, Mario and Princess Peach. Yeah. <laughs> I, I posted on Twitter the other day, just like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, there's so much stupid fucking shit in here. Like, you know what, Grand Metal, Metal Gear has some dumb cheese in it, whatever. Four is basically one giant cutscene, but I'm just like, it kind of rolled with it. Whereas, like, in Death Stranding, it just comes off as like this huge amount of like just big old giant fucking. I'm an auteur. I I can do fucking mm-hmm. pretentious shit, and it's, it's it's like on its face. There's no depth. To it. It's just so fucking dumb. It's yep. I I don't, the gym, everyone. I, I don't want to go like full Death Stranding ramp. I'm just like, there's a lot of dumb shit in Death Stranding. The death spiral for death not 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 like Fast and Furious dumb shit where it's yeah, so man. dumb. It's I fucking just, great. Like five. I really I I could talk about how much just like five for uh many hours Mesa knows and she has I have uh but like I was willing to give him another shot with Death Stranding because like man you know you know he's to have any chains on him this time he's got he's you know he's fully unreal unleashed and fully unchained maybe he'll make something good and I was just I couldn't have been more disappointed <laughs> I made a damn good game I've said this yesterday <laughs> I've said this before I'll say it again this is the best outcome, though. Oh, absolutely. In my opinion. Like, Death Stranding not being what it is is significantly more interesting than if it was just good. For sure. Mm-hmm. I, I think the most disappointing thing of it for me, it, it was literally just... I, I didn't enjoy the moment-to-moment verbs you're doing. You know, like, people can call it walking simulator or whatever, but I, I did not find the gameplay really? just interesting whatsoever oh, i did i did I, it was cool for like the first 10 minutes i'm just like oh now i'm doing this for 30 fucking hours and then just like nothing in that narrative was interesting like like there was weird shit but i'm just like i i just didn't care at all about anything going on in there and i i got like okay like yeah the, the boss fight moment against whatever troy baker was um higgs i think like, oh, yeah, cool. This is a video game as video game moment. And then the part where the whale, you have to like cross the ocean or whatever. Like, it has set piece moments that are cool, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I just did not care about it at all. Did you get to fight a giant flaming dead Russian? No. Nope. Fucking zero out of 10, then. That's the podcast. Yay. We went off on <laughs> such a fucking high note. We're so fucking positive. Yay. Right. Yeah. I love video games. I love video games I too. Love most of them. Video games? Video games video are actually games. bad. They were video never games good. are going to be made illegal and you're all going to be criminals. Oh, Not me, so. though. My, My dad told me it's okay. Uh, contraband. Speaking of contraband. Oh no. Wait. Contra got oh. banned? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Contra. Yeah, See, Contra's this, no this, more. This, this is two different directions it could be going. Oh, it's right. one of them bad. Contra's no more. I was thinking of Contra's a different over. Contra and I was going to be I, like, uh, yeah, oh, that, yay. I'm, I'm thinking what you're thinking, boy. Yeah. Contra died. Yep. Rest in peace. One of Contra didn't die. It was one murdered. Of best, one of the best. <laughs> By someone who is jealous of Contra's ability to drive. <laughs> ah, sorry. That was a stupid reference that nobody is going to get. I got it. I didn't get it. I lied. Yeah, see? 
Good night, everybody. All right. Yeah, Woo, that's the show. That Thank you. I can't wait for Play it. down. We're done. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah.